You've probably heard us talk all about the different locations here in Starbase, but where exactly are they and what do they do? Well, this video will explain it all. Here's an overview of SpaceX's Starbase, where they design, build, and test starships. Let's start with what you would find first on your trip down Highway 4, and that is the Massey Outpost. This is where SpaceX performs cryogenic proof testing on ships and boosters. The company also tests development vehicles and other test articles here to qualify future or current designs. This location also has the added benefit of not requiring a road closure on Highway 4 during testing. SpaceX has been building up Massey's over the last year, and that includes the construction of a large new test stand that SpaceX will use to test tanks in a variety of different ways, allowing them to further refine the design of Starship. Along with that, SpaceX can also now static fire test ships here with a complete flame trench and flame diverter setup. Recently, Ship 30 conducted a six engine static fire here, becoming just the second Starship to do so. Overall, this is great because it frees up the launch site to only be used for booster engine testing, full stack testing, and launches. Moving down Highway 4, the first location in Starbase proper that you'll get to is the Sanchez lot. This is a general storage and processing location, and many things are brought here first before going to their final location. For example, right now, SpaceX is outfitting tower modules for orbital launch pad B here at Starbase. You can also see the chopsticks and chopstick carriage sitting at Sanchez right now, but that probably won't be for long. Most of these parts arrived by barge and will soon be installed onto pad B, which we'll talk about later. Over here is the ground service equipment building, which is responsible for maintaining and constructing cryo lines and many other things required at Starbase. The other main building at the Sanchez lot is the shipping and receiving tent, where parts for vehicles and infrastructure are processed and installed before being worked on elsewhere. The Sanchez lot is also the home of the famous Rocket Garden at the end of Remedios Avenue. This is where ships and boosters, both old and new, rest either on semi-permanent display or before transiting to a new location. Currently, Ship 26, 32, Ship 20, and Ship 30 are parked in the garden and is more of a ship graveyard at the moment. Before we get to the massive buildings of the production site, SpaceX has recently completed a brand new parking garage next to the Stargate building. This parking garage will allow SpaceX to consolidate the parking for both Sanchez and the production site, allowing for fewer cars to be parked on the side of Highway 4, which has been an issue in the past. If we continue further down Highway 4, we get to Boca Chica Village. This is now a primary location for SpaceX employees to live and stay while they work here in Starbase. A huge expansion to the number of houses in the village is currently underway, which will bring even more SpaceX employees to the area. The village also includes a rec center, a hovercraft parking area, the Starlink building, and the restaurant and food trucks. A recent development is that SpaceX has filed for permits to build a large rec center and even a sushi restaurant along LBJ Boulevard. It's currently unknown if these will be open to the public or just for SpaceX employees and people who live in the village. Right next to the Sanchez lot is the production site, which used to consist of a whole bunch of tents and a couple bays for stacking vehicles in, but very quickly has turned into a bona fide factory with the massive Star Factory building, the construction of an office building, and the construction of two massive mega bays. The Star Factory will make sections for ships, boosters, and test tanks, which then must be stacked to form a fully completed vehicle. The sub-assemblies that are built inside the Star Factory are then rolled out into one of the three bays for stacking, the High Bay, Mega Bay 1, and Mega Bay 2. The High Bay is the oldest of these three, and until recently it was used mainly to build ships. SpaceX is still using the High Bay for newer ships, such as Ship 33, the first Block 2 ship. However, that might not last much longer. The High Bay had at one point been used to assemble boosters as well as ships, but that role was quickly taken over by Mega Bay 1. We all sort of expect the high bay to be demolished eventually, along with the Stargate building, to make way for a third mega bay. Mega Bay 1 is used for construction and maintenance of boosters. It has three work stands in the back and a welding turntable in each front corner. It's taken a while for SpaceX to figure out everything with their processing flow, but Mega Bay 1 seems to be working like a well-oiled machine these days. Currently, there are three fully stacked boosters inside Mega Bay 1 with a fourth under construction. That's boosters 12, 13, and 14, with 15 only partially stacked as of this recording. 
Next to Mega Bay 1 is Mega Bay 2, which will be used solely for the construction and processing of ships. It has three workstations and one turntable station. In fact, Ship 31 is inside right now, getting prepared for its engine test campaign. This will enable SpaceX to increase the production cadence in the future as it moves to version 2 of Starship. At the production site is also part of the launch control for Starbase, and that is inside the Stargate building. But going forward, SpaceX is building a brand new five-story office structure here in Starbase, which we'll talk about next. But for now, the Stargate building is a central hub of launch control in Starbase. An interesting note is it looks like SpaceX is planning to integrate the office building and the Star Factory into one massive structure. But we'll have to see how that plays out going forward. What do you think SpaceX will do with the Stargate building and the high bay in the future? Will they keep existing? Will they be demolished for another mega bay? Let us know in the comments. And finally, if you go all the way down Highway 4, you'll arrive here at the launch site and Boca Chica Beach. This is essentially where all of Starship's developmental flights have taken place. The launch site consists of Orbital Launch Pad A and Orbital Launch Pad B. You heard me right, two pads. Pad A is currently operational and Pad B is currently under construction. And as of this recording, it probably won't be operational for another 12 to 18 months. Before we talk about the new orbital pad, let's take a moment and talk about what used to be here, and that is suborbital pads A and B. There also used to be a tank farm that was used way back since the Starhopper days, but even though this area was used for all of Starship's low altitude flights and all of Starhopper's flights, basically the only thing left is Starhopper itself still standing there and guarding the gate. The last ship to be tested on the suborbital side before this massive revamp was Ship 30, which conducted its first static fire here, before rolling back to the production site and then eventually going to Massey's for a second static fire, but I digress. As you can all see, in place of the suborbital pads, there is now a shiny new tower, and that is Tower 2 for Orbital Launch Pad B, and it's a huge upgrade over Orbital Launch Pad A's Tower 1. This pad already has many changes compared to Pad A, like a hollow steel base that's going to be filled with concrete, teams fully fitting out each module before lifting them onto the tower, and, oh yeah, it looks like they're actually going to build a flame trench. As of this recording, SpaceX is not planning on building an entirely separate orbital tank farm for Pad B. Rather, they're going to tie Pad B into the existing tank farm. An interesting note about Pad B is that it faces south compared to Pad A's east. So when we see a full stack on Pad A, from this angle, it's more edge on to the flaps. But for Pad B, it would be looking straight at the flaps, which means newer and cooler views, which I know you and everyone here at NSF is excited for. The orbital launch pad includes a massive tank farm that's still being renovated and upgraded as I record this. As we can see here, all of the old vertical tanks have been removed, as SpaceX already has the replacement tanks operational. Currently, there are 10 new horizontal tanks, four of which are for liquid nitrogen, and six of which are liquid oxygen. SpaceX has also created another spot for an 11th tank. And with the launch site entrance moving to the other side of Starhopper, SpaceX can add several more tanks with no issues at all. Over here, next to the vertical liquid oxygen tanks, are the liquid oxygen subcoolers and pumps. These pumps help move the propellant through the cryo lines and into the subcoolers. Then over here, these several horizontal tanks are the methane tanks, which hook up to the subcoolers and pumps next door. The orbital tank farm is a key component, allowing SpaceX to store and then fill the 5,000 metric tons of propellant that are required for every Starship launch. Speaking of the full stack, it sits on what we call the orbital launch mount, or OLM. The OLM is a massive steel ring that holds the hold down arms and clamps that hold a Starship down before launch. It also houses all of the quick disconnects, cryo lines, and equipment needed to fuel and power a super heavy booster. Orbital Launch Pad A also features its iconic launch tower, Tower 1, a gigantic 140 meter tall tower that sports a pair of arms capable of stacking and catching boosters and ships. Although, the catching part hasn't been tried just yet. Those aren't the only arms though. There is a third arm, the Ship Quick Disconnect arm, which supplies the data, power, and fluids to a starship ahead of launch. Underneath the launch mount is the flame deflector system, which is used right before engine ignition to protect the base of the pad from the fury of those 33 Raptor engines. This system is a steel plate sandwich in which high pressure water flows through and gets sprayed up at an angle to act like a flame deflector and suppress the sound and heat of launch. Well, there you have it. That about does it for Starbase. Hopefully this video helped you wrap your head around where everything is. 
Of course, SpaceX seems to change things on a weekly, if not daily basis here, so we'll have to make an updated version of this video in the future at some point, but until then, we'll see you next time.